you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and what a beautiful day. It's about 78 degrees and kind of sunny. It's going to be a little bit colder tomorrow and that's the day we're going camping. Uh, uh, it's still going to be okay. It's going to be nice. It's not going to be freezing or anything, so uh, we're excited. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do, though, before I can even hook up and go. Heidi will join me a little bit later whenever I get out to the campground, but I have to mow my lawn. Let me show you that. Dandelion fields. <laughs> Look at all these dandelions. They go away, though, after, well, I don't know, I don't maybe a month. Uh, they just disappear, and we don't really see them anymore. I need to do string trimming around the house, but that's not going to happen. Uh, I want to talk about my camera real quick. It's a Sony Action Cam. I have a couple of them and they're really great cameras. I'll go over all my equipment somewhere down the road. I already did a video in the past on a lot of my equipment but I've upgraded and I've bought some more stuff and uh, it's just something that some people like to know. And one of the reasons that I'm talking about that is because people were asking me what this thing was on my wrist. <laughs> it's a, a live view remote for the camera. Um, basically what this does is allow me to see what the action cam sees because there's no LCD on this. Now I've got an LCD screen pack thing that I bought that makes the action cam a little camcorder and uh, you can see what you're filming then but a lot of times I don't like to use it. It adds a little bit of weight to the camera and kind of takes away from the camera being so small. Um, these Sony action cams are great. I know a lot of people shoot with heroes but give these action cams a chance. They're not not bad at all. Plus, they have built-in image stabilization, which Hero don't have. Uh, it's something that they've had for a long time, and it's been a big selling point. The action cam that I have today is an AS100. I also have an AS30 or an AS20. I can't remember which one it was. But it's kind of nice because this live view remote lets me not only see what I'm filming, but start and stop the camera or cameras, up to five of them I can put on this live view remote. And I can switch between the cameras and turn them on, turn them off. I can switch modes, I can make them time lapse, I can make still pictures, I mean all that through this remote. So that's why it's on my wrist. It, and it's waterproof. I mean both of these things I can go underwater with, so that's kind of nice. Although I don't do that, I'm not a swimmer or anything, but it's nice to get out and know that I can be in the rain and I'm not going to hurt anything. What I have to do today? Well, I have to clean the garage to some extent. With that electric jack repair, you can see the electrical box and all the electrical crap still out. Um, my tools that I use um, for electrical work is all kept in this one box, so it's packed pretty full. And then, of course, well, I got to clean up. You can see I just got stuff sitting out here. <laughs> I didn't really put anything away, but most of the tools are put away. Um, I didn't use very many, and I've got these string trimmers. Uh, I've actually got to go deliver one of these. These are for sale on Craigslist, and I got somebody to ask me if I could drop this off uh, for him. He'd buy it, um, and he's on my way. My son's got a job at the hospital. He loves it. It's a great first job. He's in environmental services. He cleans up like the OR rooms after surgeries, and... Uh, any other kind of normal stuff, you know, uh, floors and, and waxing and, I mean, all that stuff. But he loves it because he gets to kind of hang out by himself and do the job. So really proud of him that that's his first job. Better than my first job, that's for sure. I uh, also need to wash the truck. I need to put my mirrors on, my towing mirrors. I did put some little bullet mirrors in there finally. I have to adjust those uh, for the close-up stuff. Uh, the camper, I have nothing in there of mine. Heidi put a lot of her clothes in there, but I didn't get a chance. I was working yesterday on uh, this jack, and I'll tell you why. Um, one thing that I didn't realize is if you have a disconnect switch and you set this jack up like I did in my previous video, what happens is, is when you have the camper plugged in, uh, the camper is trying to charge the battery all the time. Uh, there's voltage coming from the charger going to the battery. That's why I have the disconnect switch because uh, it's older technology and sometimes it would overcharge the battery. So I would disconnect the battery using the switch and that was it because I would disconnect the ground uh, going to the trailer and the charger could not complete the circuit because one of the components was disconnected through the switch, the ground. Well, guess what? The wire that runs from the positive is now grounded through this jack. So what was happening is there was that battery charger still running trying to charge through this little cable 
as soon as I flip this switch. So when I flip this switch, it would not only power the jack, but it would also try to charge the battery all through the little ground wire and the voltage would be up in the 14 volt range and that's not real good I mean this is supposed to be run on 12 volts maybe 13 uh, and we'll go down to as low as 10 possibly but I didn't like that at all so what I did is I wired in a separate switch so whenever I want to run the jack all I got to do is make sure this is on and the battery's turned on and then it just uses battery power um, and that's when the camper's plugged in. Uh, if the camper's not plugged in, uh, both those switches can be on again and it will run on just battery power. Uh, once I'm done and if the battery is on or off, it don't make a difference, I turn that off and it disconnects the circuit going to the jack on the power side. I can't believe how many bees are out. This bee has been trying to attack me all day long. Let me show you. See him? See him? He's a big one. He's wanting to get me bad. I don't know what that is. It's kind of like a bumblebee. It's kind of like a carpenter bee. Let's see how close we can get. Yeah. I should do a slow motion see if I can catch his wings. I don't really care for them because what they do is they set up nest in the ground and then cause problems. I mean big problems because I had some serious swarms out here one day so look away if you love bees. Hopefully they didn't make people sad. <laughs> I know people love insects and I don't do that when we're camping. Oh that brings me up a good point and I'm gonna show that to you guys. Um, we do carry a, a can of wasp hornet killer whenever we go camping uh, like this here. And I know it's nature, and you know, you're not supposed to be killing nature or anything like that. But we've run into situations where we've gone out and uh, had problems. And whenever we contacted the, the camper host, they've come out with a can of spray and just psh, sprayed. Now, does that mean that gives us the right to spray? No, but uh, it'll allow us now to get in touch with the camper host say, hey, I've got spray. Is it okay if I kill? And they'll, they'll let us know. Speaking of bees. I wanted to kind of bring this to your attention and I don't see a lot of people doing this uh, in their videos and I don't know if it's something they do and they just don't show or maybe they don't know so uh, whenever you're trying to hook up to your campsite for the first time especially uh, at the beginning of camping season um, especially in the north a lot of freezing and contracting has happened there could be a possibility that there's some sort of a short inside that electrical tower which usually they're just some sort of a fuse box that's on a, a post of some kind and there's something that you should do when you go to the campsite every single time that would make sure that you save yourself from potential injury now the first thing is is make sure that whenever you come over to your electrical box uh, that you're kind of in an area or you're set up to have an escape route and I'll tell you why here in a second but what I want you to do is before you open the lid of that box just give it a quick little tap and not it doesn't have to be hard just just enough to rock you can use your fist and kind of bump it that way if you want but there's two reasons that you should do that the first reason is if there's a short in the box and you're in a motion that's not a grab motion if there is a short in that electrical because you gotta figure that they've got 50 amp service there um, you won't be in a grasp mode to where if your muscles contract because you get shocked um, you know that's why you hang on to something when you're getting shocked is because your muscles are contracting through the electrical impulse that your brain normally sends to your muscle is now being done through the ground so if you by just slapping it or, or hitting it or using the back of your hand if for some reason that box is hot and it shouldn't be um, you'll feel it and you again won't get electrocuted because you're not hanging on to it the other reason you do that is because a wasp or bees or whatever the case may be it's because a lot of those lids they lift up and you gotta put your hand underneath and instead of grabbing a, a handful of wasp nest uh, or yellow jacket nest you're just bumping it to stir them up and that's what the escape routes for <laughs> so you know that if you hit it and you start seeing something come out of there like a swarm of angry uh, yellow jackets or hornets, uh, usually yellow jackets, you can move away quickly. 
So that's just kind of a tidbit. Now, I've got a lot of stuff that i got to do today, so this video is going on long enough, and we'll pick up whenever there's a lot more to show. Probably me hooking up and uh, getting out of here tomorrow. Uh, but I got I got a lot of work to do guys. So as always and maybe soon. I hope to see you guys out there. Bye